Well, I've come back to Machoro competition cars because last time they were midway through building this mid-engined, all-new road legal recreation of the last rear-wheel drive car to win a World Rally Championship. It is the Lancia 037. In this episode, I'm going to be driving this out on the street. Turn your volume up or your volume X up. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. So Frank, you set up Matoro competition cars like 20 odd years ago. Yes. And these are your obsession. This car is my big obsession, yes. This, 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 this particular, particular car, yeah. Right, the 037. Yeah, from, from back to the 80s till now, uh, I always want to build one and I started this one for myself, but uh, <laughs> we, we sold it now, but it's, I'm o o completely okay with that because it's, it's uh, all what I had hoped for. We built it ourselves completely. So you've built a sort of like as was, but with extra safety and... Yeah, and for the new uh, FIA uh, uh, rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need a, a bigger and a better uh, roll cage. Yeah. And uh, so the cars can now compete in rally again, the two wheel drive uh, Group B cars. And that's, that's uh, nice. And, that's, and I, I hope we, uh, we, uh, we go with this one to Mexico. And uh, afterwards comes comes back to here, and then we uh, have to rebuild it again. I think after a thousand kilometers. Is that what it is? It's 800 kilometers of uh, special stage, and a little bit more than 3,000 uh, road kilometers. Goodness me. So this is the first one. Now I'm here because you're going to let me drive it on the road, which is brilliant. Can't wait. I mean, original versions of these, I know they were fairly crudely made, and now they're worth over, well over a million euros if they're yeah, it's, it's, uh, And they are not in the best condition, the most of them. Yeah. All the parts are 40 years old. Yeah. So if you want to compete in a heavy rally, you, you have to build a new one. Yeah. I have actually been passenger in an original 037 safari car uh, from a car cave. If you're a patron of this channel, you will have seen that video. Le needless to say, they're deafening inside. Mm. I, we couldn't have any form of conversation while I was being driven around in one. But so this, the main, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason why this car came about, the 037, is because Lancia had been really successful in the 70s with the Stratos, yes. which is basically a homologation rally car yeah, that looked like a supercar, yeah. which was an amazing car. And then in 1980, was it, the Fiat Arbath 131? And 78 and 19, yeah. Uh, Lancia was already uh, bought by Fiat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the 131, uh, Fiat switched from Lancia to Fiat for rallying. Yeah. With the 131 Abart. Yeah. So they were world champion in uh, 78 and in 1980. Yeah. And then they switched back to Lancia with, with this car. Yeah. This is uh, the first cars are from 81. 81. Yes. So the car that came after this, the S4, that was four wheel drive. Yes. Uh, had a bit of a delta body shell on it. Yeah, only the windscreen. Is that, is that all it was? <laughs> and, and the AP, a right. Pillar. But this obviously being two-wheel drive, and this I, I actually completely forgot that this was so loosely, as loose as loose gets, based upon a real production car from yeah. about there to 
to about there. Yeah, the, the, only the, the compartment. Huh? That, yeah, that's it. And so that is a, a Lancia Beta Monte Carlo. Yeah, from that car we only, we only use that part of the chassis and the door handles. And the door handles. For so the rest, nothing. So, so this, is a, this is off a, a, a Beta Monte Carlo. And, the, and, the, and is the car, apart from that, Kevlar, glass yeah. fiber? The, the body is completely Kevlar, also the roof. The, the middle section of the roof is Kevlar. Oh, okay. okay. The, this they made uh, special for uh, Walter Röhl because he was higher. Yes. So they had a, a little bit more room in the, in the car. Yeah. First. Right. Time for a nice drive around the Netherlands countryside where they're harvesting. Got to let the warmth, get the warmth into the oil. It, apparently, yeah, it'll stumble a bit as we let it warm up. No, 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 no. But that's cool. The boy, yeah, like that. So I have to short shift anyway. There we go, right. I've got the comms on because apparently it's impossible to hear anything like anything. Otherwise, so. Uh, we appear to have gone into a farmyard. I'm not local to the area, and that's clear. Right, reverse. Shit me. Word of advice, kids. Uh, don't, don't drive rally cars around farmyards that are active at harvest time because you don't get any friends that way. Right, ever pulled away on gravel in an 037 and given it a few beats? No, me neither. I am short shifting because I'm getting used to it and I'm on very loose surface. Plus, it's not my car and it's half a million quid, two or more, to build it. It doesn't bog down as much as I thought it would at low RPM, but that's probably because of that forced induction. It's just ever ready to ram air down the mouth of that 2.1 Lampredi twin cam. I can't believe how much power they can get out of these in period. Over 300 horsepower, just so much for a four cylinder 40 odd years ago. The way that the engine is, I mean, I've got these Cobb's headset on because it's the only way you'll hear me. But um, the engine sound, the, the volume X supercharger is so close behind my ear the driver's ear. You think you need to shift up, you think you're at a high RPM than you really are. It's so shrill. Maximum power of 305 horsepower delivered at 8,000. I'm not going to be going 8,000. I'm on the public road. We've just found some amazing sort of country roads, fields either side with crops in and stuff. We're in farmland here, the Majoro competition cars. But the sound is ridiculous. It sounds like you're being chased by a swarm of bees. I suspect it sounds like that when you hear it outside. sounding car with four cylinders out there I would say because of that mad induction volumetric roots type supercharger and a mid-engine rally car is a bit bizarre anyway they don't have mid-engine rally cars anymore but of course back then you know there weren't really any rules and speed ramp you can kind of do what you wanted to do I've got the guys from Matoro actually in front of me to just tell me where to go because I'm not that familiar with the roads. And... Man. 
to think that this came out 40 and a bit years ago and only had a capacity of just over two litres. They were ringing out so much from such a small capacity engine. And the engine is so close to you and this is, you know, this recreation is a safer, stronger, more pliable car, better tyres, better damping, you know, less chance of understeer. The car actually, the suspension actually moves when you go over bumps. Whereas before in period, you know, they, they, they skipped around like hell. I've got a bit of air con on, which is a vent in the ceiling. <laughs> this ZF box is, um, is hanging right, right out the back. You can see the ZF box right out the back because obviously the engine's flipped around. I am on, like I said, I am on public road, so I have to be respectful of that. I'm just very thankful. And this is a public road, apparently, even though it's sort of mud and gravel. What the hell? I've been told it's okay to go down here, but it's basically a mud road. And uh, so, well, fuck it. This is not a show car. This has been built to FIA standards so it can historic rally which means it's a safer version of the original bearing in mind you know the original 037s are over well over a million pounds now uh, they only made I think 22 of them 23 of them to make this a viable homologation car they had to sell 200 road cars whether they ever did well I'm pretty sure they did but uh, I don't know that for sure it's lucky that Machoro are based near some wonderful farmland. So we are driving around with sweet corn and crops either side. And we are lucky because the weather was not supposed to be this good today. And you might know, I have a history on the Late Break Show of driving powerful, fairly leery cars when the weather is not your friend. There's still quite a lot of mud on the tyres. This is the business end. Can we can we lift this lift this up because it all just comes away, doesn't it? <laughs> Look That's at that. It. So the main ingredients of a 037 are four, four cylinder twin cam. Yeah. 2.1 2.1 2.1, so 2111cc from 1995cc. Not a turbo, supercharger, hence the Volumex name. Yes. Which is at your end, isn't it? I've got the yeah. exhaust end. Yeah, and You've got if you volume. have a turbo, it's on, in, uh, on the exhaust, but the Volumex is driven by the, by the timing belt. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's directly in the inlet. So in period, because these have got the maddest, you've probably heard, already from the intro, the, the, the sound of this engine is so distinctive and odd. That's like a two-stroke. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got the gearbox right behind that, which yeah. is here, and that's a ZF gearbox. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a solid gearbox from ZF. Yeah. It's completely new built. All the parts are new, also the engine. And it, uh, it was also used in uh, BMW M1, uh, Ford GT40, uh, Tommaso Pantera in, in, the, in the 70s. And oh, 80s. really? Yeah. Okay, okay. So it's got a fairly good pedigree. Yeah, it's only, uh, it's, it's uh, redeveloped for rallying with shorter gears and. Uh, yeah. And, and we've box. got, we've got, um, I forgot to say, we've got, we've got double wishbones, haven't we? On the, or certainly on the, yeah, we've got double wishbones here. Yeah. Front and rear. Front and rear. You can, you can adjust everything on this car. Can you? Yeah. And, and what kind of power are we talking about? Because in period, you know, for a four cylinder, I remember this thing was really high powered. Yeah, they had an, uh, the latest spec. This is the latest Evo spec. Uh, they had 330 horsepower with, really? with uh, water cooling, ah, water injection. I wanted to ask you about that. So there was water injection in the supercharger. Yeah, just before the, the supercharger, two injectors. And you can spray water in. 
and that was for just certain moments, like a sort of like a bit of a nitrous hit. Or yeah, something. you only have twelve liters of, uh, of water, so you have to think when you're going to use it because <laughs> it's it's uh, it's over before you know it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I've been before, and you can see the deltas behind Frank here. That's your sort of has been your main business for a good few years now. Yes. And I know you've got a fairly full order book. Uh, I'm not going to say thanks to my video because that just sounds like I'm being self-congratulatory. <laughs> but I know that you've had a, a, a good few orders. Yeah, yeah. But if people are watching this thinking, I would like to order a 037, you can... You can build one complete. Yeah. It, you, this is born out of obsession, you can tell. Because you said off camera that you think there's about 2,100 hours in the build of this. Yes but in the development prior to the build, the research, getting everything right, is probably the same again. Yeah, that's correct. Over 4,000 hours. I can do maths. Frank's got a hell of an office. I must show you this if we get a chance to take some shots of it. The die-cast models are exquisite, um, and the books. I forgot to also say, just there, that is the start of another build, right? Yeah. This is just your second one. Yeah, yeah it's already sold. And what I like about this is obviously you can see it's a space frame car with just that skin in the middle from the A pillar to the sort of B pillar. But also off camera, you mentioned about the fact that in period, the only strength in the front end was in the middle. Yeah. At the sides, there was no protection. Not at all. I want to say a big thank you to the owner for letting me drive this because this car has been built to order to be used in competition. Uh, it's actually going out to the Panamericana in a few weeks in Mexico, the owner's Mexican. And um, it's only ever been driven once in one shakedown. And I'm the only other person to drive it before it gets shipped away. So I feel very lucky to drive this thing. I also feel very lucky to have met the guys that drove these damn things in period, flat out. Uh, Volta Roll, Mickey, Miasian, both amazing drivers and amazingly are still alive because these things were not safe. Group B was not safe as you well know, it's quite well documented how unsafe it was. But this car you see is a recreation so it's still eligible to race in FIA historic rally but it's safer. Safer cage construction, safer seats, harnesses. Um, no, in period, the cages were thin and aluminium. I'm pretty sure they were useless. Oh, but I'm driving around some villages, so I have to be respectful of the speed limit. And I'm really glad that, although it's a dog, dog leg gearbox at first is where second usually is, the clutch is really compliant and nice. And, um, and this headset allows me to like think a little. I hope you're getting some of the sound though. Please turn up the volume when we get out of the village. Sometimes at low RPM it's stuttering like that. Bah, 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 bah. I thought it was just because the engine's cold. Um, it's actually not. It's because the fuel injection, which is mechanical still to make it eligible for historic basin, the Kugel Fisher Bosch um, injection system, when you come off the throttle, it still fires the same amount of fuel in. It's a very crude early setup, early days of injection. So short shifting sometimes helps it. I just can't imagine driving this at, at 10 tenths, but I am lucky enough to drive it on public roads. And this gives you a little idea, a little idea of what it would be like to commute in a Lancia 037. And it just sounds like I'm breaking the speed limit the whole time because it's so frigging loud. And it sounds so odd. But the steering's amazing. You know, I, you don't drive mid-engined rally cars very much. They don't make them anymore. Um, the closest thing for me that I've driven uh, is Metro 6R4, which is a video I would urge you to watch. 
And another homologation mid-engine rally machine is the uh, Valencia Stratos, which came before this. Uh, beautiful thing. And I drove a recreation of that, the Lister Bell classic car. That's a short wheelbase V6 rally car. And I did, I was part of a um, chap called Kevin Johnson, who I visited his car cave. Go and watch that video. Yeah, gearbox is surprisingly okay. Um, you've just, it's, the guy said to me in Maturo, they said, just, it's hard to remember what gear you're in. You can get completely lost in gears, not because there's a lot of them, but because of the dog leg first. And you concentrate on so many other things going on, which I am. No, I'm not going to drive this car really hard because we're on public roads. I'm trying to give you my best impression of what on earth it's like to drive a car like this. And although I, I champion electric cars a lot on the Late Break Show, I'm a big fan of charismatic, charismatic and historic piston cars. So apparently when, when you're on it, as it were, on a rally stage, this will guzzle a litre of fuel per kilometre. today and as you know I have a habit on the late break show of driving really fast Larry cars in terrible conditions but I'm pleased to, pleased to say the weather is being kind to me today. So this is 4000 RPM if I, if I shift down I'm not shifting beyond six today because I'm on the public roads and it's just simply not my car. I cannot imagine what this would be like to drive flat out on a stage. Listen to that bloody sound. Right, 3,000, four, five, six, Seven and a half. Shit me. Honestly, you, you, in the back of my head, I'm constantly thinking that it's going to blow. I've been very fortunate in this job on the Late Break Show and before that in my career, driving some pretty amazing cars. This definitely feels like a special car. This is, I would call this a, you know, a resurrection, a, re a recreation. <laughs> Shit, it's good. Gosh, it's exciting and physical. When I was driving the car, I noticed how much room I had. Way more cockpit room than I was expecting. Headroom and width, which was brilliant. I mean, these are very thin, these tillet seats, aren't they? They're lovely and, and slender. And the, the doors are, I mean, the doors are hilariously light because there's no strength in the doors. They're just, they're just skin over the, the space frame. But yeah, I'm, this, is, this is as was in the period in terms yes. of the dash and the, the layout of everything. Completely original, like original, yeah, and everything. Of course, so to be eligible for the FIA historic racing, the gearbox has to be same orientation and... Yeah, same gearbox, yeah. Uh, engine, uh, everything, suspension. We also drive with uh, period correct suspension, so 40 year old. Uh, developed uh, Bilstein suspension. I was amazed at how well it turned in and how s safe is the word? Predictable. predictable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very easy car to drive. If you compare it with, the, for example, the Ferrari, yeah. who has a, a kind of same setup, uh, almost the same horsepower, uh, almost the same uh, wheelbase. Yeah. This car is much more a rally car. Is it really? Yeah. This is great. It's really good. And there's, there's, that, there's that water tank just yeah, under that's... the thighs of your co-driver yeah. for the uh, water injection and the Volumex. Giving that extra 20 horsepower for what? 10 minutes? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And your head, your head and your back are so close to the supercharger. 
Now, if you've already watched the, um, the Stradale video, the Resto Mod Integrale from Maturo, you won't have seen this room because we didn't get a chance to really film it. We didn't get time. So I want Frank to take me in here because there's another treasure trove of cars in here. So this is interesting because I've immediately clocked a couple of 131 Mira Furies. Yes. Which are, was the 1980 rally car winner. Yeah, 78 and 1980. Exactly. So that, they're, they're bloody rare now. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's my new project. Eh? Oh, is it? I, there's a, there's I, two grills behind you. That's yeah, the end, yeah, isn't yeah. it? And it is a complete body kit already. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, if you don't know what I mean, it's these ones here. Um, I did a car cave of a chap called Willie in Scotland who has an immense... 131 um, Abarth rally car. But this is an original Abarth. Yeah. We bought to uh, yeah, redevelop the car. I, I like to have an original car. Yeah. Then we can uh, uh, yeah, do the development ourselves and, and remake the, 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 the parts. Just when you think a, del a Delta is the most square car, do you remember how square these were? Yeah. So square. This is a Delta, isn't it? This is... Uh, a Lancia Delta 16 Integrale 16 valve. 16 valve. And it's 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 a brand new car. Really? Yeah, I did uh, I think 70,000 kilometers, but it's the nicest car we ever had. Really? Without without doing anything with it. So this is unrestored. This is unrestored. What what? Hang on, a Delta that's never been welded. A Delta that's never been welded. It still has the the, the plastic in the doors. No. From new. Bloody hell. Do you own this? Yeah. It's for sale, but uh, I don't like to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> this is phenomenal. But, but it's also, everything is new. The, 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 the steering, everything is new. You say this is done 70,000 kilometers? Uh, I think, yeah, 69. Goodness me. I don't get bored of looking at Delta, especially when they've got the Martini stripes. But this one only did, I think, 13,000 kilometers from new. Really? Yeah. I found it. Uh, this is also a, a brand new car. Bloody hell, Frank, you've got some amazing deltas here. This is sort of Deca Delta Mecca. That's another Delta with no front. The, the car I bought two months ago, it's an original Martini 5. They made 400 of them. Yeah. And they are, uh, together with the Martini 6, uh, more or less the holy grail of the deltas. So this is like an unfinished project, is it? Or yeah, yeah. The car is like this for twenty years now. I, I bought it like you see it. Twenty. Twenty years. I know this is by far the least powerful, and probably the uh, the well, definitely the smallest car you've got here. Mm. But it's, it's probably my favourite. I absolutely love these. It's from so zero to sixty is the fastest. <laughs> sixty kilometers, not <laughs> not miles. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're just great, aren't they? What a little weapon. That's uh, a A112 uh, Abarth engine. Normally they are 600 uh, yeah. cc and this is 1050. So this is probably really quick then. Yeah, I mean, it's for st made for street, so we have 95 horsepower. Originally they had 22. Yeah, 95 in this yeah. will be really potent. 525 kilos, I think. Thankfully it's not for sale. <laughs> Thankfully. These are for these are for a 037, right? That's the rear tire. Of the, this is the front tire and this is the rear uh, slick tire for oh, the 037. Oh, one of those. Yeah. My question to you is, if someone wants to order a 037, how much are they? A uh, completely new built car is 465,000 euro. Okay, plus taxes. Taxes, uh, not included. So half a million euros. Half a million euros. And then when you drive, want to drive rally with it, you, you need some parts, extra wheels. Yeah. So uh, you come. Uh, There's a whole load of kit that you're about to send out with that car to Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is almost, uh, I think, seventy thousand euros of spare parts. Really? And if I was to order one today, how long's the waiting time currently? Uh, at, the, at the moment, I think it's more or less three years. Is it really? Yeah. You guys are busy. Uh, I have to build twenty-seven cars in the next three years already. So, not all O three sevens, of course, but uh, most of them Deltas. The classic recreation rest and mod world is well and truly alive. The 
the world needs more obsessives, people who really, really want to recreate icons like this, but make them slightly better, safer than what they were. This is a half million euro car. It's obviously not going to appeal to a lot of people. It's very niche, but it harks back to a period, a Group B rally period, which is so, so evocative to so many people, myself included. I'm just really pleased to have got to drive it. It drives so well. It's such a cool car. I'm just glad it exists. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Would you like me to drive more evo evocations? That's a word, isn't it? Evocations of rally cars. If so, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. Oh, subscribe. And we have merchandise. There's a link in the description, I promise. <laughs> Oh, my God.